Okay, friends, it's time to get started on replacing our lower transmission cooler line. That's going to be located on the passenger side of the radiator all the way down near the bottom where the lower radiator hose is. It's easy to access right down through this area here in between the front and the air box. Now, obviously, it's a little bit hard to see on video, so I'm going to go ahead and get some of this out of the way so you can see. But otherwise, you can carefully reach your hand down here and do all the work on your own. Easy peasy. Use an 8 millimeter on this or a flathead screwdriver. We just want to loosen up that clamp. We'll make our way up to this area, loosen this clamp as well. Now we can give this a little wiggle. We're going to separate it from the engine. Separate this area as well. Lift this up, get it out of your way. Now with all that out of the way, you have a nice clear view of exactly what's going on down there. At this point, what I like to do is just take a nice pry bar or a screwdriver and I carefully get in between this plastic area that you can see and then the radiator itself. Being very careful not to damage the radiator in any way, I essentially just want to go ahead and pry that plastic right off of there and I'll show you what's underneath it. Now with that out of the way, if you were to look into this area right here, which is the coupler that goes into the radiator, you're going to see a little horseshoe looking clip in there. It's a little bit hard to get out of there, but you can easily do it with a pick or even the specialty tool that's meant for it. I typically just use a, a 90 degree pick. Now before we start taking this clip off of here, something that I want to mention is of course there could potentially be transmission fluid inside this area and it's going to want to go down. Gravity works. So make sure you have a nice collection bucket underneath there so you can recycle that fluid. Aside from that, the clip is made of metal. So if you want to save it, possibly reuse it or just put it in a junk drawer, go ahead and make sure you have a magnet in the area. Typically when you get underneath this, it's going to want to just pop right off. I'm coming inside these holes and I'm essentially just feeling for an ear to grab onto. I can see it starting to lift up right there. Once I have it lifting up, I can carefully get underneath it with my pick. Let's get our magnet ready. All right, so there's our clip right there. Now the next thing we're gonna do is start separating the line from the radiator and from the fan shroud. On the fan shroud, you're going to see this area that looks like it clamps right around that hose. Let's go ahead and carefully get in between. We'll just gently pry. Once that's separated, we can make our way to where it connects into the radiator, which is down over in this area. We'll just give that a little wiggle and go ahead and separate it. There we are. Now let's get underneath the vehicle. The next thing that we're going to do from underneath the front of the vehicle is to go ahead and remove this front shield right here. For this, you're going to find several 15 millimeter headed bolts. Let's go ahead and remove all of them and the shield. Typically there's one in the center. Now with that out of the way, we have a nice clear view of the line that we're going to be replacing. Looking at the other lines, you can tell that I should replace those as well, and I will, but not in this video. So with that said, you would just want to follow that line. You're going to find some mounting points for this one in particular. We're just going to carefully get in between this area, separate this. Generally I just remove this clip, we'll set it aside so we can reuse this. All right, now let's make our way a little bit further back. And as you make your way over here, you're going to be able to find where the transmission line's mounting again. There we are. Now the line that we're going to be going for in this video is the top line. So I'm just going to carefully try to pry that out of there. Once you have that separated, make your way to this area right here. Remove this clamp as well.
Now we can follow that line, and you're going to see that it leads up to this area on the transmission. Essentially, we're following the upper transmission cooler line to this area right here. Now for this, you're going to pop it off the exact way you popped off the one on the radiator. Go ahead and remove that plastic piece, and then we're going to remove the clip that's located underneath it. I'm just going to use my pick here. All right, so this one looks like it's a lot more corroded. It's a good idea to just use some penetrant in this area. It's not going to hurt anything. We'll let that do its job. Let's use this little pick now. Get that right in there. All right, I've got it starting to come down. Carefully get in between. Grab that clip. All right, so with the clip out of there, let's carefully get in between this area. I'm going to gently start prying it out as I move this up and down to separate it. Keep in mind, there could be transmission fluid in this area. Once again, make sure you have your collection bucket under here. There we are. Now let's make our way up in front here. We're going to carefully grab onto that transmission line. Now we can carefully start pulling this down and away from the vehicle. Carefully give this a little tug. Now typically if you were doing both these lines, you would just go ahead and take them all apart and then pull them out together. Generally when I do this, I just kind of spin it as I go and it should pretty much want to unlock. And there it is, friends. Okay, so now it's going to be time to get ready to install our brand new transmission cooler lines. When you look at these, you're going to see that they came with that locking plastic piece. Sometimes that plastic piece might make its way all the way down to the far end of the steel. So what you want to do is just go ahead and put it all the way up near the end where it's going to have to be at the end of this. And then of course we're going to take some tape and we're going to try to tape it in this area, but also we want to go ahead and tape up the hole right here. As we pass this through the side of the truck here, we don't want to get any of that dirt or debris or gunk or anything else inside the transmission cooler line. Go ahead and tape it up so everything's safe as can be. Doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to protect it. Do the other side and let's get it in the vehicle. Once everything's taped up, we can start passing it through from the front. Now as we pass it through, keep in mind this transmission line is pre-bent. So we're going to have to go ahead and turn it a little bit as we start pushing it in just to make it past everything. As I'm guiding it, I'm going to make my way down the line here and just continue making sure that it's going along the proper path. As you're doing this, you want to pay special attention to any sensors or wires or anything else that you feel as though you might get caught on. Obviously, we don't want to damage anything. All right, so I have this slid in here, and as you can tell, it's completely upside down. If that's the case, just carefully start pushing it back a little bit towards the front, and then just give it a little spin so everything lines up properly. This is looking pretty good. Get that up where it needs to go. Just gotta get it around that other line. Okay, I've got my black piece. Now I'm just gonna get this pretty close to position here and then we're gonna walk down the rest of the line and just make sure everything's run the way that it needs to be before you connect anything in. Now from up in front, let's go ahead and take this transmission cooler line and we're pretty much just going to set it up so it looks like it's going into position. Now what we're going to do is follow our way down along the side and we're going to start putting in all of our mounting points. But what I want to do while I'm doing this is just make sure that the line is actually going exactly where it needs to be. This line in particular was the top line so the way you want to have it is so it's sitting up above the other. Now let's go ahead and clean this up right here. I'm just going to stick my rag in a little bit, give it a little wiggle. I just want to try to get out any dirt or debris or gunk or anything else that might be in that area. Now we can take our horseshoe clip here. We're going to slide that right inside the grooves. There should be three grooves on this unit. Okay, here we are. That just snapped right in there. I just want to make sure that it doesn't look like it's too loose. That should be fine. 
let's take our transmission line. Now before you go ahead and press this in here, you want to of course pay attention to this black piece. You want to make sure it's slid up a little bit so it's not going to get stuck on the tranny. But also you want to make sure that this line that we're installing does run up along the top of the other tranny cooler line. So if it looks like it crosses over and under and around and around, you're going to want to straighten that out before you clip this in. After all that, let's go ahead and take this line, we'll get it lined up and we'll gently press it in. Give this a little wiggle, press it in. There we are. Now what we want to do is give it a nice tug. <clears throat> what I want to try to do is pull it out of here. If it pops right out of there, that clip isn't seated properly on the line. You need to make sure this line is completely inside that fitting right there. If it pops out while you're driving, you might end up causing serious damage to your transmission. Once you're sure that the line's in there and it can't come loose, go ahead and put that plastic lock over the clip. That's essentially just going to make it so the clip can't fall out while you're driving down the road. Clip, clip that right over. There we are. Once you have that in there, let's go ahead and put the line back into that metal clip right up in here. We'll just get it lined up and press it down and in. Go ahead and get these on here. Go ahead and lock that in. Let's go ahead and put in this rearward clamp as well. Let's give this a quick inspection under here just to ensure that everything is secured. You don't want to have this line wobbling around and potentially rubbing up against something that it shouldn't. Once that's good to go, go ahead and take your little splash shield, put it back in position, start in all of your mounting bolts. Once they're started, snug them up. Obviously looking at this, it would make more sense to go ahead and replace it. Now back up at the top, I'm going to start putting in my U-clamp for the fitting up on the radiator. Let's go ahead and get that into the groove. Okay. Let's take the tape off of this. Go ahead and lock that into the fitting on the radiator. Go ahead and give that a nice strong tug, making sure it's definitely not going to fall off just like before. Let's grab that plastic lock, slide it right on over. Let's go ahead and get that line into position inside the fan shroud. Now from back up top, assuming that line looks like it's nice and tight, we can go ahead and get this back in. At this point, I'm just going to slide this right underneath this area, press this up against the throttle body. Now I'll make my way down to this side over here, connect this into the air filter box. Now we can tighten those two clamps. Make our way over to this one. Now you just want to grab onto this and give it a nice tug. You want to ensure that no dirty or unmetered air is going to make its way into the engine. Now let's re-secure our upper radiator hose to the air inlet tube. Now it's going to be time to go ahead and check our transmission dipstick. To do that, I'm just going to go ahead and pull on this little tab right here. We can lift this right up and out. Now when I do this, I just take a quick peek at the color of the fluid that's on it, give it a quick wipe. Now we'll put it back in and we're just going to make sure that it does have fluid on the dipstick. If it does not have any fluid, we're going to have to add some before we even start up this vehicle. All right. So now looking at this dipstick, I can see the area where this level is supposed to be when it's running and when it's hot. Right now it's not running, so the fluid should actually be a little bit above that. Once it starts, it's going to go down, and then as it warms up, it should make its way in between this grooved area here. So with that said, I'm just going to wipe it off one more time. We know that we have transmission fluid in here. 
I'm going to go ahead and slide it down and in about halfway. Now we can go ahead and start up the vehicle and we're going to let it run, get up to operating temperature, double check to make sure we have no leaks while this is happening. Once it's up to temperature, we can go ahead and check this fluid while the vehicle's running on a flat and level surface. Okay, so I checked for leaks. I don't have anything. The engine's been running for a little while and it's up to running temperature. I'm going to come right down here. We'll put this in, give it a little twist, let it sit for a second. Go ahead and carefully lift it up and out of there. And then we're going to inspect the transmission fluid level. Looking at this, it looks as though I'm all the way down in this area here, which essentially tells me I need to keep adding until my fluid makes its way up into the safe zone in between these two hatches. I'll just add until it's in that position, close it up, and then take it for a road test. Now to fill this, it's gonna be easiest using a nice, clean, flexible funnel. I'm just gonna go ahead and add approximately one quart in my application of the manufacturer specified fluid. Then we'll start it up, run it for a little bit longer, and then recheck that fluid level. Now looking at this, you can tell that it's absolutely perfect. It's all the way up in between the hatches, maybe even at that very top line. If you happen to have went just a little bit above that, that's okay. But if you went all the way up to this area here, well then of course you're gonna have to get some out of there. Easy way to do that is to come right through this dipstick right here with a vacuum device and you can generally draw some fluid up and out of there. Of course, if there was a lot of fluid in there that wasn't supposed to be, you could also drop that transmission pan but then at that point you're replacing all the fluid. All right, now that we're sure it's good to go, go ahead and push it all the way in and lock it down so there's no way moisture or debris can make its way into your transmission. After you've done this, it only makes sense to go ahead and clean down your mess and then take it for a road test. Thanks for watching.